Welcome back to the IGCIC Computer Science Code 0478 Guide. In this chapter, we will be discussing about communication and internet technologies. You will learn about methods and directions of data transmission, types of synchronization, the universal serial bus or USB, error checking methods, ISPs and an introduction to the internet, HTML structure and presentation, and web browsers and HTTP. Let's start with the methods and directions of data transmission. When transferring data between two devices, three factors have to be considered. Number one, the direction of data transmission. Number two, the method of transmission. And number three, the method of synchronization between the two devices. Directions of data transmission. Number one, Simplex data transmission. Data is transmitted in one direction only. For example, data being transferred from a computer to a printer. Number two, half duplex data transmission. Data is transmitted in both directions, but not at the same time. For example, two people communicating over a walkie talkie. Number three, full duplex data transmission. Data is transmitted in both directions at the same time. For example, a telephone conversation between two people. Methods of data transmission. Number one, serial data transmission. Data is sent over a single wire slash channel one bit at a time. Number two, parallel data transmission. Data is sent over several wire slash channels and several bits of data at the same time. Note. Parallel data transmission is a faster method of data transmission. However, it is used to transmit data over short distances to prevent data from becoming skewed or like mixed together. Synchronization. In order for data to be transferred between computer systems, they have to be synchronized. Two methods of synchronization are number one, asynchronous. Here, Data is transmitted in an agreed bit pattern. Bits of data are accompanied and set with a start and stop bit, also known as control bits. This means that the receiver knows when the data starts and ends, preventing data from becoming mixed up. Number two, synchronous. Here, a continuous stream of data is transmitted from the transmitter to the receiver. Data is accompanied by timing signals generated by an internal clock, ensuring that both transmitter and receiver are synchronized. The receiver then counts how many bits were sent and then reassembles them into bytes of data. This is a faster method than asynchronous data transmission. Universal Serial Bus USB is an asynchronous serial data transmission method commonly used to transfer data between computers and slash or devices. A USB cable contains a four wire shielded cable with two wires for power and earth and two wires for data transmission. When a device is plugged in via the USB port, the computer automatically detects that a device is present and the appropriate driver is loaded. If a new device is detected, the computer will look for an appropriate device driver or prompt the user to download one. Below are the advantages and disadvantages of USB. Error checking. When data is transmitted, some errors may occur. Common causes of these errors are power surges, damaged cables, electric interference, and synchronization problems. Error checking methods are used to check whether data is corrupted or damaged. Some of these methods include, number one, parity checking. Here, a byte of data is allocated a parity bit before the transmission takes place. Systems that use even parity have an even number of one bits, while systems that use odd parity have an odd number of one bits. Before transmission, an agreement is made between the transmitter and receiver regarding the parity type. 
The first byte shows the system using even parity since there is an even number of ones. On the second byte, it shows that the system uses odd parity since there is an odd number of ones. Also, a byte is basically 8 bits. Another example. The transmitter and receiver agrees on using even parity. There's, an, there's clearly an error here since there's an even number of ones in the center's byte while there's an odd number of ones in the receiver's byte. Number two, ARQ, also known as automatic repeat request. It is an error checking method which uses an acknowledgement and a timeout. An acknowledgement is a message sent by the receiver to the transmitter indicating that data has been received correctly while the timeout is the time al allowed to elapse before an acknowledgement is received. If an acknowledgement is then sent before the timeout occurs, the message is resent. First, the timeout is set to a certain interval, for example, 20 seconds. Then, data is sent to the receiver. If the data is sent within 20 seconds, an acknowledgement is sent to the transmitter. If not, the data is resent. Number three, echo check. It is an error checking method which involves sending the data received back to the transmitter. The transmitter then compares the two sets of data to check if an error has occurred. This is quite unreliable since it is difficult to find out whether the error occurred when sending the data in the first place or when sending the data back to the transmitter. Number four, checksum. With this method, data is sent in blocks and an additional value, the checksum, is sent at the end of the block of data. The checksum values are usually generated with a predefined mathematical algorithm. Common checksum algorithms include MD5, SHA1, and SHA256. First, the data is processed through a mathematical algorithm to calculate the checksum value. Then, the data and the checksum is sent to the receiver. The, the receiver runs the received data through the same algorithm to produce a checksum. Finally, the receiver then compares the checksum sent by the transmitter. If the checksum value is the same, it means that data has been transmitted correctly. Internet technologies. The internet is basically a worldwide system of computers and networks interconnected with each other. An ISP, or Internet Service Provider, is a company which provides the user with internet access, usually charging a monthly fee to the user. An IP address, or Internet Protocol address, is a 32-bit number which identifies the location of a device on the internet. It usually follows the following format. So, how does a MAC address differ from an IP address? Essentially, a MAC address is a unique number which identifies each device on the internet. Every device contains a different MAC address from one another. On the other hand, an IP address identifies the location of each device on the internet. It is possible for multiple devices to have the same IP address. You can think of the MAC address as the number of people living in a house and an IP address as the house they are going to move to. The number of people does not change, so the MAC address stays the same, while the location of the house does change, so the IP address changes. When transferring date, uh, files over the internet, a set of rules must be obeyed. This is known as a protocol. An example is the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP. Sometimes, HTTPS, or HTTP over secure, is used when date sensitive data is transferred over the internet. The green padlock system on the right shows that a website is using HTTPS. A web browser is software which allows a web page to be displayed on the user's computer screen. Most web browsers have a home page, a history of websites visited, and the ability to store the user's favorite websites.
HTML structure and presentation. HTML, or Hypertext Markup Language, is a language used to write web pages. This allows web browsers to easily identify and display web pages onto the user screen. The makeup of a web page written in HTML can be divided into number one, the structure. It is the part of the HTML document which includes the semantics and structural markup of the document. Number two, presentation. It is a part of the HTML document which is responsible for the content and style of the document and how it, be, it will be displayed on the user screen. The author of the web page should have an HTML document which contains the structure and a CSS or cascading style sheet file which contains the presentation of the web page. So, by the end of this video, you should know the methods and directions of data transmission, the types of synchronization, the universal serial bus, its advantages and disadvantages, the various error checking methods mentioned, the difference between IP address and MAC address, the functions of a web br browser and what HTTP is, the difference between HTML structure and presentation. On the right are the resources used in the making of this video. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I'll see you guys in the third chapter, which is Logic Gates. Bye.